All right, YouTube. So listen, I shot quite a bit of footage and content around this product and I'm actually sharing this on Facebook too. I've shared a lot of behind the scenes content. So there's been a lot of video footage shot about this thing. And for right now, it's complete. So I'm actually going to do this video in reverse, right? Thought about how I wanted to present this to the community because this is such a niche product. And I just finished playing a couple of hours with this thing, like just seriously sitting down, enjoying it, getting it set up and put the way that I wanted it to be put. So you're seeing a finished product within this video. We're going to talk about a couple of different things within the transitions that occurred prior to me getting to this place as to how I got this thing fully modified the way that I wanted it to be. So if you're new to the channel, thank you. I do appreciate it. This is a Chulix. Let's just start right there. This is an arcade cabinet that is a replica of what you would call a Vulix. A Vulix is a Japanese cabinet that, you know, is renowned around the world. I've got a couple of um, their arcade sticks that I have featured on my channel, and it's a beautiful piece of technology. Now, the Chulix is designed to be more affordable, but the reality is they're probably going to be easier to find. I don't know, guys want to give a shout out to my friend Sheldon. He is in the community. Um, got me mine for a great deal. Um, and from there, I just started modifying it from an aesthetic perspective. Last year, I shot a lot of content, made a few videos, and you guys can definitely check those out. But how we got here today at this point was because I wanted to take it to another level. I really wanted to get this thing set up so that it could be optimal for me. Now, I've done a lot of browsing and I'm going to give some support within the description of this video to a couple of different people that had inspired me to, you know, get my piece of hardware up to par to where it is. Uh, but ultimately, what I wanted was to be able to sit down on this thing. It needed to be comfortable. It needed to perform well. I needed the best graphical fidelity that I could get. So within this video, you're going to learn a lot about why I made the decisions to go along with the parts and things like that that I decided to go with. So I want you to enjoy. This is going to be a long watch and there's going to be timestamps down below. I'm going to catch you guys after the intro. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. As I said, Happy New Year. Hopefully you had a great time during the Christmas time with your family. So let me just open up by kind of telling you what to expect from this video. OK, so what I want to do with this thing is um, I want to perform a deep clean. I'm going to get myself undressed and put into something more comfortable so that I can get a little dirty with this. I want to take off as much of this as possible. I need to be able to remove you know, enough to get around to the monitor because that's the biggest thing here. I've got a new PC uh, put together and uh, I want to be able to have it perform well with the monitor. So feels like there's glass here. Um, going forward later in the year, there'll be other things to come, but I'm pretty much going to timestamp all of this so that I can go through this with you guys. Now, I started taking this thing apart and within it, I just said, you know what? Let me actually get some content about this just in case you guys have any questions about how to do this if you happen to get one of these pieces of products so the timestamps below are going to pretty much put you in position where you know you can just kind of skip through towards a certain part when we get to the part of the monitor that's really probably going to be like the most sought after uh, piece of information because i've seen an adapter that you can buy from the hadouken website and in my opinion it's not worth it. <laughs> now that might sound bad, but you know, if I can get some home remedy type stuff just put together and can get a great fit in here, you know, I spent about 1100 on the monitor. The monitor performs well. I love it. Um, I spent what I spent on a cabinet, but I don't want to have to spend several hundred dollars or a few hundred dollars on a mounting bracket for this thing. That is just not worth it for me. Now, if this was a Vulix, I probably wouldn't even be changing the monitor, okay? And I, chances are I'm probably going to get a Vulix in the future. I'll probably be putting the Tayoto inside of it. The only way I'd be changing the monitor is if it just had like a 720p. But if it's got a 1080p like this, um, then I definitely won't be changing it. And so, yeah, so this video is going to pretty much encompass everything that I want to do for this particular project. So even if I'm not doing it within this video, I'll be talking about it. I expect there to be some length there. So like I said, just use the timestamps below 
um, and we'll consider this timestamp to start with the intro of the video. So uh, we're going to start taking this thing apart and we'll be right back. All right. So this thing needs to be taken apart. Most of your Chulix cabinets, Vulix cabinets may or may not come with the top advertisement. I actually have to order mine. Um, that content was created last year. And so I was able to find a seller that got me a replica of, you know, what fits on the top. Um, it came with a few screws. I'll say six to be specific, but you will need a couple more. What's really important is at the bottom, you have two screws. But anyway, I took that off. Uh, the next important piece, if you come to the back, there's Phillips screws all throughout this thing. So, so far, I haven't seen anything too crazy. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six there. Um, my guess is that's going to make it where this will dissemble. I don't know, but there was an important one here and right here. So got this piece unscrewed and it came with this, right? This little metal piece. There's one on the opposite side too. So there's two of those, right? Um, cause I was looking like, man, how am I going to get this off? When you look at the side, this is like not even a screw. First, I was thinking Allen wrench, but it's not even a real screw. But taking that piece off kind of shows me that a part of the frame is there. Um, so part of this, I'm probably going to have to snap off and what have you. There's a, another Phillips down here. Um, so I'll get that off. Again, that probably looks more to be like the same up top. My guess is taking those off will make it where the frame of the monitor is pretty exposed because again that's the biggest piece for this video um uh, but like i said i'm gonna i'm gonna make this video have some depth so that we're talking about everything but what i want to do is i want to be able to just completely get this thing stripped down so i can get it cleaned and and looking the way that i want to so let me finish getting these off and then we'll be right back to the next transition All right guys so piece down here has one screw it's one phillip Kind of a short guy got a bowl or a box or something to kind of contain everything i thought this piece will remove down here like the one up top but this is all literally a part of this same piece here so this screw right here there's one phillips exposed right there i've already started loosening i'm taking it off the other side and get this out it's got a little short one there too short goldish looking color and it just makes him come off, right? So that's completely just one piece there. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna just clean everything while I have it taken apart. So you have one on each side. So far, man, it's been pretty easy to take apart. Now, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is glass 100%. Thoughts, because I haven't looked at anything. This is kind of a part of the, the adventure for me. My thoughts are taking these off might get me i don't know this but man i want to do so much with this i even want to get new speakers into this thing um so right now i think we are making good strides i'm going to try not to make this video have so, so much filler time but at the same time i want to i want to just capture um my experience in all of its entirety right all right so we're gonna go ahead and try to drill at this not literally drill but Phillips sees right away guys, and making uh, some progress, right making some progress. So got both of the bolts out of um, the side of this, right? Just kind of has to be up like this because when you, when you screw the bolts out, it falls back on both sides. So kind of brace yourself there. Not a ton of weight, but if you're not expecting, you kind of got your finger there. If you have someone helping you, um, you know, kind of look out for them there. The speaker part, this is really cool because I'm excited to do this. Uh, this equally has two Phillips, one up top and down below on both sides also. Uh, so this put us in position. These are done really tight, really, really tight to get the uh, connections loose, right? So you have this three prong connection there that just goes to the back like so. Um, couldn't figure out how to get that off. It's on the bottom, so nice tight pinch. So again, those are done really, really tight and it is what it is. So got that off. So I'm excited about this piece because I'm going to see if I have a uh, tool. Looks like an Allen wrench to get the speaker off. Now, there's one gentleman. I don't want to reference his name at this point in the video because I'm going to get his name wrong. But 
Uh, his video was the most intuitive and it was recently posted. Guys, by the way, if you're not following the Vulix slash Chulix Facebook um, community, please do so. As of right now, that group has under a thousand um, members and it is an amazing group. But anyway, the gentleman that I'm going to reference in this video, he had a good teardown where he did his monitor. I didn't want to watch him taking the monitor out because I wanted to save that piece for me. So I kind of skimmed through uh, some of his talking points. Right. Just wanted to look at end results and kind of see how he came out. But this is pretty awesome. One thing I did see is I was skimming through his video again. The only reason I didn't give it full watch time yet is because I didn't want to kind of ruin it for myself. But he said something about the speakers not being. Uh, perfectly aligned inside of here. So I'm excited about that. I do want to do new speakers, but now we have the monitor and one piece that can be completely taken out. Bottom is also going to be the same. I'm assuming I'm going to take that apart too. because I'm going to clean all of this out. We've pretty much got an empty Chulix though. This is freaking incredible. So nice frame here. You got their monitor there. I will keep this monitor. This is a 1080p 60 hertz monitor. I'll keep it in case I ever get a Vulix. And if the Vulix, for whatever reason, forgive my ignorance for not knowing, if it doesn't have a 1080, 1080p screen, maybe that screen will work. I'm not sure. So far, this is looking good, though. We are looking good here so far. think we're in a good position getting this thing taken apart while I'm in it I'm gonna go ahead and get the the bottom speakers taken apart let's kind of do this with you guys this is not as tight as they were up top this bracket I actually might Come down. Yeah. So I have to make sure I hold on to this bracket. But I want to give this thing a part fully as much as possible. Make sure I don't lose any of these screws. But yeah, as you guys can see, same thing here. Loosey goosey, right? Lucy. So we're going to go ahead and get the other part taken off and I'll do some cleaning behind the scenes. We'll be right back. All right, guys, forgive me. I'm a little bit thrown off with where I'm at with this project. I'll watch the content and I'll try to clip it and and make everything look good. So these are the speakers that go into the Chulix. Um, yeah, very small. Uh, I have some extra PRV tweeters. Um, I should have known better. They're tweeters. I mean, they're when I say tweeters, I mean tweeters. So they sound hella good. Um, I'm not going to play the music I was listening to, but you hear a ton of sounds, ton of highs and things like that. But I need to get full range speakers. Um, and so I'll do that. I just kind of testing some theories here. I'm going to gut everything within this, though. Like so everything is going to go even down to whatever light that might be coming there. I'm going to implement my own strip or whatnot to get me some illumination here. But I'm literally going to cut every single wire here. I'm getting rid of the power supply, the JAMA harness and everything. Um, I don't want to deal with any of it. I want to get my own stuff. Now I had some Alpine six and a halfs. Oh, let me move around here. I have some Alpine six and a halfs. I tested around just for the sound stage. And yeah, the PRVs were just not what they were supposed to be. So I'll let you guys know exactly which speakers I'm going to go with, but they're going to be the same size. Now I'm also going to end up cleaning this up, right? Want to clean this up so that it looks good. Probably going to spray paint this also through and through black. I want to try to mess around with getting an orange. It might sound crazy, but I want to try to mess around with getting an orange so I could take the speaker off and get the front face of this orange just because I have those. I love you too, baby. But I want to try to mess around with getting this um, color scheme implemented into what I've got going on. But I'm definitely probably going to end up going with some kind of pro audio 
and if I can, I want to avoid the grill if I have to. Uh, if I don't have to use the grill, then I won't. Oh, interesting thing I want to point out. Video in the description where I learned this. These speakers go in pretty much sideways. So like that. That's how they go in. They don't go in this way. They go in that way. This was my ignorance to not paying attention. But after I seen that, I validated by looking at the brother's video. Link it in the description. You put your grill on like that so you can get everything on the way you need to. It's no big deal because, I mean, it's, this ties it down. And this is even the same with the PRVs with them being thicker uh, speakers. You know, you just put it sideways and that's that. So there's ways to make things work and everything works pretty uniform to how they put it together in China. So when you have that to the side, you get your holes lined up like so. And then these holes right here align up with those. So everything goes on flush. So it doesn't matter which speaker you go with at this point, you can get it back in there nice and clean earlier. I was shooting some content. Like I said, I don't know if, how I'm shooting this yet. I got to get it all done. But I was saying that I was going to leave the grill off and just let the PRV but that speaker's not even gonna fit. I'm also not gonna be doing the terminal piece that was included that they had. I'm just gonna run the wires raw, positive, negative. I'm gonna do some thicker wire too, because this wire that they have is extremely frail. Use some of this stuff I have laying around for like my home theater setup, just so I can have some better stuff there. But all in all, it's gonna be much cleaner. As I said, gonna gut everything that does include the JAMA. I don't like the power supply that they have or anything, so gonna get this completely cut off. Get my own stuff in here and then start from scratch. New fans, I'm probably gonna do USB powered fans uh, because right now the way it's set up is when you turn the cabinet on, they come on and they're pretty loud. This is loud. The one that typically goes into the top door, which I don't have on right now, it's loud. So gonna get new fans there, USB powered ones. And just get those guys all nice and cable managed. And again, you're going to see it within this video, but just kind of walking you through the process. This all is being created over a couple of days span. So just taking it in as we're getting it, giving you a good look at this. Now, I'm not telling you guys or suggesting that you gut your system. I'm never going to use this for the coin mechanism. And uh, if this was a Vulix that I was looking to just collect and keep mint, then hey, We'd be keeping all of this stuff, but being that we're going with a PC, we're going to go with a new amp. We're doing a new monitor. We're going to do a new power strip. So I got to find me a strip that's going to go in here, preferably something that has smart functionality and some USB connectivity options. So this guy right here, this is going to come off. That's a Phillips screw there. There's another Phillips screw here. So get this the hell out of here. All of these wires going in here, coming to this power supply. So. This is literally like a surge protector power supply, but it's all just a couple of different pieces. Uh, this part right here, either I can just run my, my own strip through here, but what I'm gonna do is just close this off, remove the piece that's there and see if I can get it running. Uh, so we'll do it that way. We'll be right back. All right guys, so for now, we're pretty much done with the cabinet. What I need to do next with it is get it cleaned up. I do have this one piece here I need to get removed. Coin mech is going to stay there, but, you know, it's dirty. It's going to get clean. Got a ton of uh, two-sided adhesives that need to be removed and get that all cleaned out. I haven't even begun to really touch the monitor piece of it yet, but it's all good. Completely stripped down. Got to do some research, learn some stuff about some electrical connections so that I can try to get a very clean power supply or I'm sorry, surge protector ran in there so that I can have everything I need. Everything's going to be modern. Now I am keeping the amplifier uh, that came with this unit. I think it's of some great use. I'm going to do new speakers, but that amp is sufficient in my opinion, but monitor PC amplifier, they're all going to have their own DC and uh, just get them plugged into the surge protector. So that's how I'm going to run that. Uh, the next portion of this video, I want to spend time talking about what is going in here. And that's going to be this Cyber C case. Now, I reviewed this on the channel. I will card in the video that I did. 
Now in that video, I had an RTX 2060 inside. I have since added an RTX 3080 Ti graphics card inside this system. And this is a look into this system. Now for in-depth content, talking points around it, I just would ask that you just kind of check the video out. But these parts were all selected because I wanted to make sure that I had a great mesh with my monitor. Also wanted to give you guys some kind of height references. And here we have it positioned right next to the Taito X3. Now, I love the X3 and the X4 and the multi system. Those are great, great platforms. In my opinion, though, I just wanted to make sure that I had some hardware that could really give me more modern performance. OK. Um, and so the biggest opportunity with those is if you're not just trying to play local games against the computer and get that experience, that's cool. But the Chulix and the Vulix machines are, in my opinion, they're really designed for you to be able to play with some performance. So I didn't want this to be a casual machine. I wanted this to be something that I could actually utilize. Um, and so the monitor that I chose is none other than the BenQ Mobius. This monitor is 32 inch. It is 4K resolution. Um, if you guys don't know, I pretty much get a lot of monitors and TVs every year. But this monitor, I bought it early last year in 2022 with this Chulix in mind. One of the great features I love about this monitor is that it has a remote. It's not going to be common on many monitors. Now, in these Chulix systems, once you get your monitor in place, like you've seen in my videos and many others, you have to go behind the monitor to kind of adjust your settings. I don't want to deal with that. I wanted something more modern. This remote would be able to work. And the remote even has speakers. And even though I won't be using those speakers, it's got some great technology. It does have something called HDRI. That stands for High, Dyna High Dynamic Range Intelligence. So if you were playing some content and didn't really know how you should have it set, uh, you can turn that feature on and it would kind of soft calibrate things based on what's actually going to be there. But let's talk about what kind of games I'll be playing on this. So when it's all said and done, what's going to happen is I'm going to program this computer so that when I turn it on, it goes right to this front end called Big Box. And this is going to be function and controlled by my arcade stick. Now, right now, I've got this set to work on an Xbox controller. So you can envision the same. The controls are gonna be mapped out just the same. Now, what I'm looking to play on here is games that I can play online with others. So like DNF Duel, Dragon Ball Fighters, Mortal Kombat 11. I have all of these games legitimately purchased through Steam and I've imported them in here so that it's just really plug and play. Street Fighter 30th Anniversary. We got Street Fighter 5, Ultra Street Fighter 4, Capcom Fighting Collection. And these are just to name a couple of games that I've so far got installed into my uh, system. Um, I do have some more in-depth content on how this works. I've went as far as to got myself like a 14 terabyte drive with everything, but this is just gonna be with this in mind. Now, the reasoning that I went ahead and got rid of the, you can shut this down, of uh, the RTX 2060 uh, that I had initially in this is because I wanted to make sure I could play Street Fighter 6. I wanted to play all these games. I wanted to play them at the highest graphical fidelity with the highest frame rate to get the lowest input latency. And because I had the RTX 3080 Ti lying around, I just said, hey man, it was a match made in heaven. So if you guys happen to have any questions about this, this is the one two punch combination that's going to be really designed to punch everything here. Now, it's getting pretty late here, so I'm going to stop filming for today. Um, in the next transition, we will certainly pick things back up, though. All right, guys, so let's uh, let's get back to the mix of talking about some things. So, again, there's a lot of content I shot around this. So you guys seeing this, however long this video is, I shot a lot of content. Uh, but here's the speaker that was in the Chulix, very small. And, you know, I played around with about four different pairs of speakers to be specific. Um, I ordered myself a pair of these Memphis 3.5s, so three and a half inch. I uh, had some PRVs that were three inch. These are tweeters only, right? Uh, so I was gonna do a combination of doing tweeters up top, 
tweeters are for highs. They literally don't have any base in them, like at all. No matter how much you turn a base on, these are designed strictly just to give you highs. These things are heavy too. Um, and I was gonna do some mid base units down below. So maybe the Memphis down below. Um, these Pioneers, these sound amazing. These are four inch speakers. If you decided that you wanted to do something like this, because if you want to customize your stuff, I do, I do encourage these. They're very inexpensive, very powerful, sound really good with the factory amp, which speaking of, this is that. I now have my own amp and we'll talk about that. But if you wanted to do something like a four inch speaker, you would need to drill out. Now this, this drill isn't wide enough. This is only three and a half inch, but you need to get something like this get it connected to a drill bit and drill in to widen that four inches. Um, what you would do is just make sure that you didn't go so wide to where you damaged your openings here, because this thing is really nice. Um, and as you guys can see, I already started to cut away with this. And the reason I did that is because this four inch speaker wouldn't fit in there. That's how I determined like, yeah, I need to get this cut. I didn't, I decided not to do that. Um, so I'm gonna keep the box the way it is and I decided not to go with the four inch speakers. I decided not to do the PRV tweeters. Uh, these speakers that I landed with, I'll put them in the description, but they are China speakers. Uh, they sound good too. The amp is a China amp too. So inexpensive stuff, even though I've got a lot of high end stuff on this, these are audio labs. Again, I will have this in the description. I will force myself to remember to put all of this in the description to help you guys out if you're looking for this. Um, this amplifier is from Sunbuck. Um, it's an amplifier that I will put in the description also. Now, this cost under $50 at the time where I got it. This amplifier, um, if you look at the top, it says Hi-Fi Stereo Dual Channel Amplifier. Uh, what it gives me is a treble knob, a bass knob, and a volume knob. This doesn't give me a pre-out for subs because at this point, guys, I've determined that I didn't want to put a subwoofer into this cabinet. I like some of the ideas that I've seen with people putting subs in their cabinets and that's totally cool. But this thing for me needs to be, be about functionality. I want optimal performance with this. And so I feel like just getting a subwoofer is just gonna be, it's more vibration through the metal of the actual cabin. I just don't wanna deal with that. So I got some speakers that give me some great mid bass. I got a stronger amp that would just give me more power, more, more power uh, for pushing these things truly. And in my opinion, that's going to be good enough. Now, if you can come on around to the side, just kind of keep it low here. Uh, this particular amp does have a couple of cool features. Number one, it has its own power, so it plugs right in. Um, you do have Bluetooth. It can do full SD. You can do USB. That's pretty cool there. And you can even do FM. I, I'm not sure why you would want to listen to that, but you know this does have the ability for you to be able to do that. Maybe if you were just using this like in a workshop or something, and you want to hear some FM, uh, that is an option. But the fact that it has the Bluetooth is really nice. It doesn't weigh a lot. Again, the link to this exact one will be in the description. Let's do some audio testing just to hear what this thing sounds like and we'll do that in the next transition. All right, so this is my second time recording this, guys, just in case, this is some copy, copy free music. Um, this thing gets pretty loud. Trouble settings are pretty good. Get that turned to about 60. Some bass in there to about 50. Volume's at 20. Turn one of these speakers in my direction. things it sounds it sounds really good man I'm, volumes at 50 percent come on around here so you can see yeah hopefully that wasn't too distorted for you guys but the point is um the links to everything that i've got are in the description this is a pretty nice and affordable system amps under 50 bucks and then the speakers, I want to say they were like $28 a pair. Uh, for me, that was good because like I said, this is what was in here. Um, and not to say that this didn't work, because it worked. This was the combination that was there. I'm still going to keep this amp, but this has a much bigger magnet. We were just joking. Everything's trying to stick to it. Like even that. I know it's rolling, but 
no joke damn they probably weren't want to stick so yeah so that's what we got for the audio so far man we'll be right back all right team we are in the home stretch man home stretch so right now <clears throat> this is the assembly so i have some twist locks oh i gotta take this back off to get this on there i got some twist locks that will make this thing very nice can't pull it up now twist lock put on bam we good there uh so right now i got the brooks situation um twist locks got a nice lock mechanism so make it so that when this thing is closed it locks when it's open opens it up so i can get in here configure whatever i need to so we got sound with sticks sound with buttons all of that covered in the content shared uh what i've decided to do i removed the the coin portion of my chilix and uh this is a elgato stream deck i removed the bottom ran the usb-c well it just unplugged itself but pretty much it's magnetized i'm gonna set this here and uh i'll show you guys at the end of the video kind of sort of how i got this connected and configured that's going to be there for like you know all of my keys um i'm taking an old amplifier i have this is sound blaster i'm pretty much going to set it there probably get some two side tape run a cord on there for that just so i can have connectivity for me to be able to have a headset in case i want to stream record because the idea behind this is not only for me to be able to game on it but for me to create some content also going to be in the gaming channel this year we are going to be posting a lot of gaming content on the gaming with tkk that's in the description i'm gonna be very meticulous with this video starting the new year and going forward with how i you know tag the videos and put descriptions and things like that so we got a nice clean aesthetic like i said i gotta take this ball off and uh get this ring back here so we're gonna get that done but also i want to show you guys the monitor these brackets came from walmart two dollars and fifty cent each man so pretty much what i did was i took out the monitor that was in this thing it came in this casing i reused the brackets that came with it with this monitor you pretty much have to use some kind of dividers something to kind of give it the spacing that it needs but this monitor ended up working out perfectly now this was reviewed on the channel last year this is how meticulous i was i literally bought this monitor months months before i took delivery and even signed the deal on me taking this arcade cabinet so i was i was playing for it man um but yeah this goes on really nice clean this is dope you know what i'm saying just one piece so gonna get that going now the crazy thing is this monitor has speakers and it has a sensor within it for the remote but guys it works it works really well so um the decision that i made with the speakers and these are the thumb locks again in the description i ended up going with the ones from china the audio labs ultimately out of all the options i showed you in the previous transition these gave me the best combination of uh what i liked just like sound quality bass everything just meshed really well with this amplifier that i have so yeah and uh to tie all of this in we got some in wall rated speaker wire i got some white wire so i'll be able to use some clear two side tape to get my positive negative feeds from the speakers to the amplifiers so everything set pretty well we're about to go ahead and get this thing put together guys we'll be right back okay guys and here we are at the end finished product back how we begin right let's just talk about everything listed here start from the top all of this has been featured in the channel on the channel about this so you got some advertisement here going down below Going down below a little bit more. Got okay, move this. Speakers worked out to be amazing, like just excellent. I went with the ones from China. Screen is just 
perfection. It's everything I wanted it to be. This glass is something I probably will want to do something with towards the end end of this video. We will talk more about some of the things that um, I've reserved. Going down below. Speakers, everything installed back the way that it was. Move list there. Very clean. Check out the uh, seller in the description so that you can get you something like this. All right, so we got this uh, sound deck right here. Sound Blaster does offer me headphone jack on the left and a microphone jack, both 3.5 auxiliary. All right, then we're going on to the remote for the BenQ monitor. This is an amazing selling piece to this monitor. Now I no longer have to go to the back of the Chulix to adjust the screen settings. No, it all gets done through the remote. I got my buttons laid out as follow, start, home, select. Got the Vulix engraved into this custom piece. Right here does feature two USB 3.0s. Conceal it like that. Then I went ahead and tied in the stream deck. This is not mounted, it's magnetically connected. Just using what I had instead of buying new stuff. So that works out to be good. We'll see this powered on. Now one thing I am missing is gonna be lights. I love the way this thing turned out. It just turned out perfect for me. That's what it's all about. Very selfish piece. <laughs> single control deck and it's got some age to it also and that's one of the reasons why i bought this one i kind of shared that within the video that featured it last year this is not a brand new piece i didn't want it to be brand new i mean the cabinet itself is used it is what it is we got it cleaned up and so yeah and then again just the the aesthetic of all of this coming down to the bottom we've got the thumb lock again those are in the description PC is lifted. It's important to have proper ventilation. Got that amplifier there by Sunback. Again, link in the description. Does line in, which would be your auxiliary, Bluetooth, SD. You got some surge down there. Pretty much gutted the inside of this thing. Left the coin mech there. Let's go around to the back. Cable ran so that things are clean. With the door off. So then you see some of the cable management. Everything zip tied up individually. We've got the USB that's on top of the cabinet here. Back of that PC. Zip ties used. Speaker wire ran really clean, two sided. You can see wire going from in the box on the lower speakers. Custom made mount configuration for the Mobius BenQ monitor. Everything just managed. Really clean, we just got power and display port. The monitor even has USB 3 pass through, so if I needed more ports, that would be a great option. All right, so got the back all set. Did get a thumb screw put for the back too, so that's real nice and clean. I still put the four screws there, as well as the four screws up top. So got this thing assembled back nice and clean. Um, you know, the biggest thing I wanted to do was just to try to make this as fully modular as possible. I'm not interested in running a um, manual button up top. Just hit power on this thing from the PC. And I pretty much have it set to where, you know, it won't ask for a password. It'll just come right on from the motherboard and boot right into my front end. So it does show Windows for a brief moment, but computer turns on in just a few seconds. 
So for me turning it on, it's already on already. I'm able to just fully engage in less than 10 seconds. Now from here, I've got a set where it'll load to my front end. My front end of choice is going to be big box, but take a look at the stream deck right here. I've got a few icons programmed out where I've got quick selections right there that I might be interested in playing. Even got Street Fighter 6 on there. Yeah, we got some animation and such like that. So I got one category for Windows and then within it, it's arcade. And just like um, the Multi with the Taito, I've got the Dragon Ball Fighters, got Mortal Kombat 11, got Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, Street Fighter 5, Ultra Street Fighter 4, Capcom Fighting Collection, DNF, and back to Dragon Ball Fighters. Right now, these are the games that I have loaded, and so I'm just kind of setting everything up one thing at a time, but it's all set up to work really well. You know, controls control everything, so got my button configurations for everything. Pretty much any game that I should put on, I'll just make sure that I got a configuration that's gonna work optimal for me. We'll be right back. All right, guys, so one thing that I wanna talk about what I would recommend what you guys getting yourselves and some of the stuff that I ended up deciding for me. Number one, the stream deck, amazing feature. Um, I've seen some really cool uh, setups where people have like a small handheld keyboard and that's totally cool. I do use the Logitech K400. I don't feel like I need to feature it in this video because like turning my system on and just being able to go right to a front end, it just makes it, it gives you that real arcade like feeling. The Stream Deck, you have the ability to kind of set a button up where you want to just shut this thing down or within the actual front end, you can do that too. So if you're done playing your game, you quit your game. When you're done with your game, it's going to take you back to this menu. If you hit back enough with this, it literally will give you an option to shut your computer down. So all you're really doing is just unlocking, hitting power, turning it on and playing. Number two is going to be this amazing sound amplifier sound deck um this is a sound blaster i've had this for years i bought two of them back in like 2015 and it's really cool to be able to repurpose something this is what you're hearing right now this thing is loud right um the cool thing about it though is that not only does it have a volume wheel it does as i said give me a auxiliary jack for both my headphone and for my microphone so the clip mic that i'm using right now to talk to you guys is plugged into my road mic um, I can actually just plug it right into there, have it clipped to me. So I don't have to worry about feeling like I need to speak louder. I don't need to have like a Yeti, you know, boom arm or, or arm or anything like that. The system is just like really just self-contained, just kind of like put together and that's that. The only thing that I would really use is if I wanted to capture uh, myself and stream, because again, I'm going to get OBS mapped within the stream deck where I can just hit record or stream and go live is for me to just have a camera sitting on a tripod and using my Elgato um, collapsible portable uh, green screen for me to just capture footage. At that point, everything is just like perfect and set up the way that I want it to be. So I just wanted to tell you guys, these are two features that I really would encourage. I know a lot of a lot of the guys in the community, they like to get the aesthetic cool things like, you know, a, a charging mount. Um, what I've seen, a lot of guys get the wireless pad for you charging your phone. That's cool and everything. But, you know, me personally, my phone's in my pocket. I want uniformity on the actual setup and I have seen some cool integrations with stream decks with these things. I'm not to that point where I wanted to order more parts, but using everything that I had, this is why I made the decisions that I made. We'll be back. All right. So one thing I just wanted to kind of show you guys, if you're not hip to big box, um, very, very, very nice setup. <clears throat> Starting the game pretty much puts you in a position where you'll get a couple of different options to Mark the game is broken. This is if you're doing like a ton of different emulation and you don't have all your emulators and files and things like that in place. Uh, but playing, you get a now loading. I would recommend, you know, for Steam games, setting up your Steam games outside of this first because it makes it seamless. If you don't do that, then you're kind of going to get like different windows and things like that saying that the game needs to run for the first time. Um, but outside of that, man, just absolutely beautiful, you know, 4K. If the game can support 120 or 144, um, you know, frames, whatnot, like, I mean, 
it's just amazing. And again, the audio, audio is coming from the headset. Corsair H60s, those are the wire headsets that I like to use. I don't use them for the mic. I like this Sony clip mic. Um, it's the combination that works for me, but man, everything looks really good here. Um, now this monitor selection, listen, I'm very meticulous in this, man. Uh, this monitor was purchased for the remote functionality. Uh, again, uh, really didn't like having to go behind my Chulix to adjust colors and things like that. And you kind of got to change things on that monitor, the original monitor, even though it was 1080p, depending on the game that you're playing. And then there wasn't a lot of good features about it. You know, I'm a, I'm a home theater TV content creator on YouTube. And so, you know, I literally mess around with like the best displays that you can get. And so there was just so many opportunities with where the colors were off and they were just too stale. And, you know, there's just no real modern pop and, and, and punch to the picture quality. I've seen a lot of people do like the LG QHD monitors and that's totally fine. Me, I wanted my setup to be completely put together where, you know, I'd be able to take advantage of the highest graphical fidelity and the highest uh, frame rate. The monitor puts me in a position where I can hit this button HDRI, right? What this does gives me a couple of different features. It will put you in a position where you can have the, the game HDR. It's in game mode, the cinema HDR or just display HDR, right? So game HDRI, basically what, what it does is, and to summarize it, the TV is going to take information from the cable signal. So the HDMI or display port, and it's going to alter the content based on whatever it feels it should be doing, right? Um, really at your discretion, how you will want to use that. If you, do, if you go with cinema HDRI, it does the same thing, but with a cinema base, right? I like to just, for some of the fighting games, play with just like the HDR. And which, by the way, with this monitor, you would not turn HDR on with Windows because it actually turns it off. It's kind of weird how that works. But yeah, this has been a great combination. Um, yeah, so I'll be right back. Right. So I just wanted to show you guys really quick what I was talking about. So when I exit the game, it literally took me right back to the front end, right? So outside of me turning the computer on, I really don't have to do anything, but just like navigate through my games. Um, if I hit back again, it's gonna take me to my collection. And hitting back again, it's gonna take me to the main menu of the front end, where it tells me I can either shut it down or I can just, you know, end the front end or mess with some of the options if I wanna change the artwork. I've got everything set up here where I want it to be is displaying the date, the time and everything like that. And uh, this is just really cool. So I wanted to make sure I really, really cover the experience of this and how this is um, with you guys. So, all right, man. So I didn't really go deep into like how I love the speakers and this amp. This combination is really good. Um, you're pretty much going to put these speakers back into their same exact orientation uh, that they came out of. Right. So that piece I did want to cover with you guys. Uh, but as far as this project, man, look, it's been fun. I've, I've, I've had this thing a few months, immediately went into trying to change the aesthetics with getting CVS2. I knew that I didn't want this thing to be holding onto the Tayato system. I didn't want the two control boards. I was just like, I need this to be for me. I do have plans later in the year to possibly get myself a, a Vulix uh, cabinet. And so within that, you know, that'll be a sweet build for the Tayato X system. Uh, but if you get yourself a Chulix, my opinion, you know, modify it to hell because if it was a Vulix and if I tore everything down, it really wouldn't be a Vulix, right? So that's why I felt like this was the perfect product for me to get myself to do what I knew that I wanted to do with this. Um, but this thing is gonna give me everything that I need and it's just absolutely amazing. And this cat's name is Zangief in any event. So let's talk about some of the things, some of the opportunities that I have with my setup. Now, I would love to get myself like a volume knob. That would be pretty cool and convenient to have. Um, so that's a cool thing. I'm playing around with seeing if there is a key or a setting I can adjust on the string deck for me to be able to toggle through different audio settings. What do I mean? Well, what I mean is 
I really don't want to have to go to Windows to tell Windows that I want the audio to go to my sound deck or to the amplifier. So I'm trying to play around with, you know, some hot keys and see what I can do within stream deck so that I can just toggle one or the other. That's going to just take it to another level. Um, what else? Uh, the LEDs, I, I cut everything out of this thing. It's been completely gutted. So no LEDs here, no LEDs up top. Don't really need LEDs, but my thought is that I'll probably integrate like a hue system into play. What else did I want to do? I think that pretty much encompassed what I wanted, guys, because honestly, like my Chulix has this like with this panel that I got, it's got this rustic hood look to it. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to see it in you have to see it in person to really know like the control panel looks fucked up. Like, excuse my language, but it looks messed up. Like it looks like it belongs to me. Like if you really knew me, like you'd be like, yeah, OK, this is his. You know what I mean? But the having this screen inside of here is just like. It's a super premium unit like this unit is worth thousands of dollars like this package costs more than like the most expensive Vulix that I've seen. I've been seeing whatever ones that are like thirty five hundred four grand. This was more than that. This was more than that. Um, so it, it's just it's I'm, I'm really happy about this and I wanted to make sure I put this content out there at the top of the year because this is my kind of thing. So before in a month or two when the new TV start coming out and I start dumping a whole bunch of tv content we're going to try to get at least one arcade video out each week um we're going to try to target monday as the days for arcade content so make sure that you guys are tuned in you subscribe make sure if you like this video that you leave a thumbs up if you got some questions let me know ask me whatever you need to ask me if you have some suggestions if it was something you would have did differently i would love to hear it um, i'm going to link both of the chulix vulix Facebook groups in the description of this video and I really want you to like if you're just stumbling across That's where you need to start. You need to start going to a place where you got a community of guys now While there was a lot of great information I'm happy to know that I kind of had my own vision from the jump before I even got one of these things And I knew what I wanted to do with it And I'm glad that I took the initiative to go ahead and break mine down I had a lot of people telling me they would do this. They would do that but listen, to me, this thing is a work of art. This is a master of a machine. So I appreciate you guys for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully I was able to produce it to a place where it was enjoyable for you. And I look forward to catching you guys on the next one. I'm going to end this like I always do. First, tell you Happy New Year. Second, I'm going to tell you that I hope you have peace. I hope God blesses you. And as I always say, Max Love.